This is a battle between barbaric criminals who seek to obliterate human life and decent people, all in the name of religion. Our vision is one of peace, security, and prosperity in this region and all throughout the world. Our goal is a coalition of nations who share the aim of stamping out extremism and providing our children a hopeful future that does honor to God. President Trump sounding more official than ever, delivering a landmark speech in Saudi Arabia to the leaders of more than 50 Muslim-majority nations, wrapping up the first leg of his first overseas trip as commander-in-chief. Welcome to this special live edition of Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. Also during today's speech, President Trump calling on Muslim leaders to help combat the extremism emanating from that region. America is a sovereign nation, and our first priority is always the safety and security of our citizens. We are not here to lecture. We are not here to tell other people how to live, what to do, who to be, or how to worship. Instead, we are here to offer partnership based on shared interests and values. There is still much work to be done. That means honestly confronting the crisis of Islamic extremism and the Islamists and Islamic terror of all kinds. We must stop what they're doing to inspire because they do nothing to inspire but kill. Religious leaders must make this absolutely clear. Barbarism will deliver you no glory. Piety to evil will bring you no dignity. Joining me now with his thoughts on Mr. Trump's speech and what it means for our future relations with the Mideast partners, his former spokesman from the United Nations, Rick Grinnell. So that was a heck of a speech the president delivered today. Uh, very, very pro-American. Uh, you know, you have America first. We're always going to protect our safety. But at the same time, we're going to have to have these Muslim nations lead this fight against Islamic terrorism because we're not going to do it ourselves. They're the ones that need to be the tip of the spear. Was that the message? That was the exact message. In many ways, Jesse, this was different than uh, President Obama and different than President Bush as well. What Donald Trump made clear is that American policies are going to be squarely about getting the region to clean up their own region. Mm -hmm. And I think that what he did today by combining not only this speech, which, which was really a, a warning shot to religious leaders uh, all across the region, but it was uh, also something where he brought in uh, trade. Yeah. He, he brought in one of the biggest um, trade deals ever in terms of uh, military aid. Yeah, so, so it's a hundred when you combine the billion two billion dollars that you know we get benefits from that in terms of profits and in terms of jobs over here but then that means the Saudis and some of their partners they're going to take the military lead in combating not only the Islamic extremists in the region but Iran Iran was definitely the focal point didn't you also agree there too yeah, I think the Iranian leaders looked at this uh, speech and they didn't like it at all because uh, basically in Saudi Arabia you had uh, more than 50 Muslim majority nations trying to come together to uh, to really rally around the American president. Mm -hmm. Now that is uh, a juxtaposition with the last American president right. who Iran felt closer to and Saudi Arabia, remember, they didn't join the U.N. Security Council because the Americans, led by President Obama, were on the Security Council and they didn't want to be part of a hypocritical body. That's what they said. Right. Then they started, the Saudis started canceling meetings. They didn't go to the Camp David meeting. They didn't go to other meetings in Washington. The Saudis did not want to deal with President Obama Wait, because so he was Saudis becoming close to the Iranians. meetings with President Obama? I mean, that's just unbelievable and probably they're not too happy with the fact that president obama sent the iranians what was it like how many billions of dollars for that nuke deal ridiculous let me play too some much sound to, too much before, to count i know and remember the in pallets in the dark of night let me play you some sound of former president barack obama giving the apology tour roll the tape in america 
there's a failure to appreciate Europe's leading role in the world. There have been times where America has shown arrogance and been dismissive, even derisive. The United States is still working through some of our own darker periods in our history. The United States will be willing to acknowledge past errors where those errors have been made. We have at times been disengaged, and at times we've sought to dictate our terms. So there you had, uh, well, President Bush before him, you know, you're either with us or against us, and then President Obama apologizing for America and then retreating. What was President Trump's message today? Well, one thing I want to point out from the Obama clips that you showed is that those were his first, uh, w one of his first foreign trips. It was very early on in April when he had just taken office. So this is what the world is seeing is this uh, apology tour from the United States saying, we're, we're so sorry because, you know, you can blame us, basically. You can blame America for a lot of these yeah, problems. We were Gitmo, so bad. That was about enhanced interrogation. That was about black sites. That was about the Iraq war, that it was America. Is right, and if anything partially. is if anything is going to inflame the region, it's going to be blaming the Americans, which is what many countries do as an excuse because they can't uh, they can't govern their people themselves. Right. And so I think what we have now is President Trump coming in and really bringing trade deals, as I said, but also talking about America and American values. And I think that's different. I have to say, when he looked at the religious leaders, and this is, uh, you know, religious leaders across the, area, across the region, not just in Iran, right. not just with one sect, but he said religious leaders must tell the truth and must tell their, their people, suicide bombers, so to speak, that they are going to end up condemned. I thought that that was a, a, a very real harsh moment, yeah, that's but it was very done powerful. in such a courteous way. Right, in a very graceful very powerful. way, in a way that kind of takes the heat off of these people. Um, and not only that, you know, you have um, President Trump kind of putting the onus on these religious leaders. You have President Trump saying, we're not necessarily going to be ideological and think we're going to go into these regions and change everybody and create democracy. He was hinting that there was not going to be a big push for regime change and remaking the region. It was very realist. That was the sense. He acknowledges the limitations of American power in the Middle East and wants to forge kind of an Arab NATO so they can kind of maybe share some of the burden to cleaning up their own backyard. He literally said, we're not going to tell you how to live. And I think that's a signal that's much different than, than the Bush era and the Bush uh, administration where I served. And I think that Donald Trump is really reading uh, the American people today because let's face it, in, in the Republican primary of 17 different candidates, Donald Trump carved out a way to kind of say, we're not going to be nation builders. Right. We're still going to be strong. America's going to be first, but we're not going to do kind of what President Bush had done. I think that the lessons of 9 11, uh, the pendulum swung too far with President Obama, and we're swinging back with, with Donald Trump, where he's learning from both President Bush's mistakes and from Donald Trump uh, and from Barack Obama's mistakes, and he's becoming the Donald Trump where America is first, we're going to stand with you, right. but the political will has to be done in the region. Right. We can't do it for you. No, we can't and by the way, we tried that. We'll have a whole bunch of, <laughs> and, yeah, and we'll have working. a whole bunch of trade deals with you. Right, let's sweeten the pot. You know, it swung this way and then it swung that way, and hopefully we can now find a happy medium in the Middle East. I mean, it can't get much worse than it already is. Rick, thank you very much.